Hey, so this video is going to be a example of how you can use AI tools like Claw, ChatGPT, Perplexity to create a Chrome extension. So this is going to be a bit different. I'm just going to do a voiceover. I'll walk you through the steps. So the first thing is here, I'm going to Claude and I said, I want to build a Chrome extension that sends the URL of the current page I'm on into an Airtable database. Can you help me build this? And the reason why I want to build this is because I am uh, using ChatGPT, Airtable, and Zapier to uh, have a lot of different automations. And I essentially create different video scripts from different tools and I don't like copying the tool URL. It just takes a lot of time. So I want to be able to just quickly use an extension to send the URL of the page I'm on into Airtable and then have all these different automations running in the back end to get the tool overview, etc. So here we are. I'm starting the first step, which is creating a folder called Boa Grabber. I'm kind of following the steps that Claude has asked me to do, which is obviously go to Airtable, which I already have an account there, so I don't need to do that. But it's saying to create a folder called manifest.json, and that is essentially what Chrome extensions run on. I'm not a coder, so bear with me as I work through these different steps, but you can see here that I'm starting that step of creating that first folder here. I did come into an issue, so you'll see me trying to kind of troubleshoot as I'm doing this live, and that's a lot of what this video will be, showing you how you can use AI to help you solve problems that you have. So in this case, my problem was I need to create the Chrome extension, right? But within that problem, there are other many problems that you need to solve and you can use AI to do that. In this case, I'm opening up Visual Code Studio, which is a program that you can download for free so that I can start putting all these pieces together because you're going to need something like this. So all you have to do is go to Google and download Visual Code Studio. And here I'm creating a new file and I'm adding that code that Claude spit out to me. Now, sometimes I'll use ChatGPT, sometimes I use Claude. In this video, you'll see me use all three. So Claude, ChatGPT, and Perplexity. Mainly Perplexity because it has access to the internet and I can get all the errors that I have solved pretty quickly. So here, I am just copying that code that I got from Claude and then I'm renaming the file to manifest.json and then making sure that that file goes into the right area, which is going to be the Chrome extension area. Now, in this case, I have a problem because it says it failed to save and it wasn't able to read the file. So I realized that I probably need to delete that file. So we're going to delete this and we're going to just resave it. So you'll see me do that here. So I moved the file to trash and then I'm trying this again. So naming it manifest.json again. So now what I'm doing is I'm making a new file for the JavaScript. So we have to name that background.js. So I'm essentially just creating that new file, pasting that code that Claude gave us and then renaming it to background.js. And now it has some other things. Now I know from past experience that you need additional files for a Chrome extension to work. So I realized that Claude probably doesn't realize this and you'll see me obviously realize this as well. And I hop into perplexity to kind of help solve the rest of these issues. It's saying that I need to find the base ID, which honestly, I was kind of struggling here. And you'll see me like copy that, which is not the right thing. I realized this later right there. I copied the table ID and not the actual base ID. And you can easily find the base ID by going to the developer hub, which you can actually access the different air tables. Here I was asking, how do I find my Airtable API key? One thing to know is that the um, Airtable, they actually deprecated their API keys. So now it's called personal keys, I believe. So just keep that in mind. But here I was trying to figure out like, how the heck do I find my base ID? So you can see here, it says API keys will be deprecated by the end of January, 2024. And then you have to go to the developer hub where then you can get your personal access token. So you would have to create a personal access token, which is kind of replacing the API key. So I copied that because this is part of the process. Like if you find an issue, you want to copy that exact issue and I want to paste it inside of AI. So essentially, Claude might not know this, right? Because there's cutoff dates and obviously Claude does have access to the internet. So what I did here, I was like, okay, Claude is not going to do it for me. So I'm going to hop into Perplexity, which is one of my favorite AI tools right now. And I just said, I want to build a Chrome extension. Can you help me build this? And I did the same exact thing. It went through the process as well. So you can see here, it actually provided additional files that Claude did not provide. So this is why it's really important that you use other AI tools. So not just relying on ChatGPT, not just relying on Claude, but using all of them together will really benefit you because obviously they're all different. They all have their strengths and weaknesses. And I believe that perplexity is really great because it has access to the internet. So if you come across an error or you come across something that you're really trying to do that may be a little bit more complex, perplexity can go out and find other people who may have done similar things. So here I am, I'm copying the pop-up HTML that perplexity provided us. So I'm just pasting that code in 
in there. And I am saving that as popup.html, just like Perplexity told me to do. And now it says that we need to create a background script. So we're just deleting that and pasting that inside of that file because that didn't seem correct from what Claude had mentioned. So we're just pasting that into the background.js. And then for step four, we're just creating another file called popup.js. And remember, this is all in Visual Code Studio, literally just copying the code from Perplexity right into Visual Code Studio. And I don't know how to code. I'm just literally just copying it. And then if I run into an error, I will, you know, tell Perplexity or tell Claude or whatever tool that we're using that I'm running into that issue. Here, I just copy that same thing where I said, you know, that the API keys have been deprecated because again, Perplexity said use an API key, but I can't use an API key because I don't have them. So we need to use the personal access tokens. And you can see here that Perplexity actually understood that. So we're going to go back into the developer hub and we're going to create our personal access token. And obviously I'm not going to share my token with you. So just, you know, obviously create your own. Here, I'm just adding the scopes to the personal access token. So basically saying, what do I want this token to be able to do? Obviously, I want it to read records. I want it to write records. I want it to delete records, right? So I'm just selecting the different scopes that I would like this token to do. After that, you will then need to add the token or create the token. So you would add a base. So in this case, my base will be the Hagen Automation video base. And you can select multiple or you can select all of your bases. I just went back into Perplexity here just to read to see if there's anything else I need to do. But that's really it to create the personal access access token. It's pretty easy. So here I'm asking Perplexity. So in the code, the API key will be the personal access token just to verify that that's correct. Perplexity says that is correct. So we are then good to go. So it updated the code for us, which is great. So I am now going to copy that and then update our popup.js inside of our code. Now I'll go back to the developer hub and create that token. You'll have your own token and you'll just replace that with your own token there. So I have my token. So again, here I am trying to find the base ID. So I asked Perplexity, how do I find the base ID? Oh, well, the table name is the table name, right? So the table name will be AI Topics. I renamed this because I felt like the space could probably add some issues. So I just renamed it to AI topics in camel case, no spaces. And then I just put that table name here. And now the last thing I need is just the finding that base ID, which was really complicated for whatever reason, but we'll get to it. Okay. So it's saying that, you know, for example, if your base ID is named my project, the base ID is app XYZ123, then you would use app XYZ123 as the base ID. So we'll go back to the developer hub and see if there's anything that we can find here. So here I copied the wrong thing. So I thought that was the base ID, but that's the table ID. So the base ID is incorrect there. It's the table ID that I pasted there. So um, just keep in mind that's not correct, but we do update that later on. So here I'm just gonna test it out. So we're going to basically just find the folder where we saved our Chrome extension. The Chrome extension is there, and then you just wanna load that entire file. So we have the popup JS, the background JS, popup HTML, and then the manifest JSON. And then as soon as you upload it, you'll see that we got an error. So the first thing it says that the version two is deprecated. So the manifest.json file is incorrect. The manifest version that we need to use is three. So I'm telling Perplexity, hey, like, you know, version two is deprecated. So we need to have version three. And this is a clear example of how you can troubleshoot with AIs. Like just tell it the issues that you're coming across, whether that's for coding or any other thing you're trying to do, just give it the error and have Perplexity or ChatGPT or Claude figure it out. Now, I like Perplexity again because it has access to the internet, so it can go and find if other people are facing similar issues. Chances are people may, and you'll be able to figure that out. Now, what we want to do, because we updated our JSON file, we should be able to load that up. We got some other issues here. It's just a matter of figuring out what those issues are and then figure it out. So here I took a screenshot instead of like copying and pasting, I just took a screenshot and said, hey, like figure this out. So I said, here are the errors in the screenshot. Please read this picture and figure it out. I Like when it comes to that stuff, I'm pretty lazy. So I'll just take a screenshot, which is a pro tip for you guys as well. Just take a screenshot and have AI read it because it has that capability, have it fix it for you. So here we are, it's saying um, some of the things that we need to do. So here's the updated manifest JSON file because there was apparently some permissions missing. I had it updated. So we got to go back into our VS code, paste that in there. I think that's it. So the service worker failed. So in this case, I'm just actually there's two. So I'm just going to take a screenshot. <laughs> All right. So then again, we're going to paste that one thing to note about 
putting screenshots inside of perplexity it's really annoying is that if you, even if you clear the screenshot from previous that like that you previously used it still will load it so you'll see later i like delete those screenshots because it just doesn't clear i think it's a bug that they have on the program so you'll see like there will be three screenshots even though there's two that i uploaded right there's two there but you'll see three right so there's three there even though i cleared the other one very frustrating because what, is, what will happen is like let's say you have a follow-up question that doesn't require the screenshots it's going to just paste those screenshots there as if you wanted those to be there and that's not the case so okay so now it's saying that there are some issues with again with the manifest file so it updated it automatically so all we do is copy that update and then we'll paste that inside of the chat so you see here i clear it out right there's no screenshots and then you'll see again like the screenshots get there so so i'm just asking if it can update the background js file so that it's correct and boom the three screenshots are there but i'm pasting that new manifest <clears throat> json file there apparently this is the correct background.js file that we need to have so we'll copy that and update our code and we will then save that code so that it works so now i'm going to remove it again because again i want to just load it unpacked and Make sure it's good to go. So that's the first time I didn't get errors here, which was really exciting because that means we're probably one step closer to getting this to actually work, which is awesome. Now it's time to test this, test this out, I believe. So here I was trying to figure out, like, I need to update the URL, but then I was like, why do I need to update it? I could just change the Airtable name of it because it just adds complexity. I just started this out, but then I was like, yeah, this doesn't really make sense when I could just change the URL field inside of Airtable. So yeah, so we went in here before it was called tool URL. Now I've just like changed it to URL makes just way easier. The cool thing is that for the HTML, we didn't really have to do anything, which was great because it just gave us the colors, the code. We can change that if we wanted to, but um, it, we didn't need to. So I thought this was correct, but then again, guys, it wasn't correct because that table ID thing is still there instead of the base ID. So we have, we definitely, you know, we'll figure that out in a second. Um, but here I am trying it out. So I'm going to bestofai.com, which is normally what I would do. So normally what I do is just, you know, copy the tools in the database and paste the overview inside of our internal GPT, our custom GPT, which writes the scripts for us. So in this case, I chose cursor sh. So go to extensions at the top, Airtable. So we got we got that working. The pop up works, and when I click that button, it should send the URL to our Airtable, which will then trigger all types of automations, which is really cool and awesome. But you can see here, it does not work. So we have a, a bit more things to do before it starts to work, because as you can see, there is nothing added to this database so we're not there just yet but we're getting closer because we got the pop-up working we got the button there it's just a matter of figuring out why it didn't work and this is part of the process guys this is what makes it fun it's so satisfying to go through this process with ai and finally get an end result that works but you have to iterate to get to that point so you can see here that i was really trying to figure out like how do i get these stupid images out of here because when i when i write this you know follow up in perplexity it's not going to actually address what i'm saying because of those images so after this i'm like i got to figure this out so key tip here guys is when you add images inside of perplexity, just delete the previous conversation thread. So here I'm asking, like when I tried it, nothing happened. I want to add some validation so that once the button is clicked, it changes text or color and then says successful if the API, if the API call went through success. So I want to say, you know, it's successful if it actually works and I want it to error out if it doesn't work. So I know that it didn't work because right now if I click the button, nothing happens. It doesn't change the color. It doesn't change text. Like I have no way of knowing if it worked or not. So I'm going to stop that. And I'm just going to copy this um, follow up. And uh, I was checking to see if those images were still there. They weren't. There's no way for me to delete it. So now I can ask it, you know, to add that validation. And here we go. We got, we got what we need. So now it understands what I'm asking and there isn't really an issue here. So all I have to do at this point is copy this code, added some additional code there for us to use. So we're going to go into our code and just delete that. And then we'll paste in there. And I think that's all we need to do here. But I think this is where I realized the table, the base ID is incorrect. But we'll see here. So this was an error where it said third party um, cookies were blocked. So we'll remove that and then we'll load it unpacked again. 
but it's going to have the same error because you saved it. And it's going to go to those extensions, send URL, and we got an error, right? So now we know the validation is working, which is great, but we have an error and it's not working. So we need to figure out why isn't this working? So here I'm asking you, if there's an error when sending the API call, can we send something to the console so that I can see why it actually isn't working? And this actually didn't work, unfortunately. So I wanted to know, like, why isn't my code working? This is my attempt of adding some extra validation here to say, if something's, you know, incorrect, send me something to the console where I can figure that out. But also you can see that that the extension itself said there was an error, which we probably want to check out in a second. So here I am going into the console itself and seeing if there's anything there that indicates why this is giving us an error. I didn't really see anything. It might not have worked. So I'm going into uh, the extensions again, just to send it again to see if it, if anything changed, but nothing changed. So just got to keep moving on. So I'm asking like, for some reason, it's throwing an error. An error. And here I was uh, trying to think of another way that I can see the error. So I was thinking maybe I can actually show the error inside of the pop-up instead of sending it to the console. So here is my attempt of copying this code and seeing if it can actually show me the error. But then I'm like, wait, this is the error right here. So we'll go back into perplexity and see what happens here. So it looked like there was a security feature that was blocking um, inside of the manifest.js file. So what we're going to do is just update that manifest file so that it includes cookies, which is what we need in order to send that URL. And I believe there was another error there and now nothing's happening. So I know there's a there's actually a problem here because the pop-up is not even showing up and it was showing up before and it's not showing up now. So we did something that we need to fix. So let's see if there's any errors and there are some errors. <laughs> so we got to fix those errors. There's four of them. So basically I'm telling it that, you know, it gave me four more errors and here I am going to list below all of the errors. I'm asking, can we fix all of these errors? So it starts with the uncaught unca type error, which will be fixed inside of the background.js file. Next is going to be the manifest JSON file to so deleting all that and pasting the new code, followed by the manifest again. So there's another update there. JK, there's one more in the manifest. So now we're going to go back into manage extensions and we're just going to remove I believe this is where I realized like the table ID was shouldn't have been where it was. It should have been the base ID, which I was struggling to find earlier. And we're updating that background.js and then also updating that manifest.js as well. One last time. And here I'm looking at the host permissions just to see. So this is where I've realized this is where you find your base ID. So right up there, it literally says the base ID is this. So we got to go into our popup.js and then replace the base the base id with the correct base id and now we'll save it and here i'm just making sure that all this other stuff is making sense just validating and it does because you can see the fetch down there is what the call should be which is vo base id table id or table name excuse me so we got the table name we got the base id so it looks like that url is correct and here i'm just looking at the different things that you can do with the api so you can list records or a record create records um, update records, delete records. And again, that all requires having that right um, access key. So I think now we're good to go. So I believe everything's good now. So what I'm going to do is just one last time, um, just update it. I don't think this is an actual error that we need to fix. So what I'm going to do is just go back to our page and do the error table. And now boom, it worked. So it says successful, our validations work. If we go inside of our Airtable database, you can see there that the URL was correctly sent. And we, bur we built our first Chrome extension using AI, Perplexity, a little bit of Claude, but mainly Perplexity. And now I have what I need, right? And now that one, one thing can transform this entire automation. So that's it for this video. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.